fare hikes ahead for public transportation. Bus and train fares for adults will go up by four to five cents soon, depending on the distance traveled. Now, the increase in concession card fares, such as for students and senior citizens, will be capped at one cent. The Public Transport Council says the hike is mainly due to rising energy prices that rose by nearly 120% last year. Chloe Chu with this report. Brace for it. Bus and train rides are set to get more expensive, starting with a 2.9% increase on 26 December this year. The Public Transport Council says it is balancing the need to keep fares affordable as costs go up. We seek commuters' understanding that some fare increase is necessary to meet the rising costs, especially in energy, and also ensure that we can continue to provide better salaries and training for our about 20,000 public transport workers. The Council will continue to protect the interests of commuters, especially those who are more vulnerable, and support the government's measures to help lower-income households. The increase is part of this year's fare review exercise. The council indicated a maximum allowable fare adjustment quantum of 13.5%. That's the largest allowable increase under the current fare formula. The remaining 10.6% of the quantum will roll out in the next few years, carried over to future fare review exercises. Transport Minister S. Iswaran said in a Facebook post that fair adjustments are never easy, but they need to be updated to keep the public transport system financially sustainable. To avoid a large sudden hike in prices for commuters, the government will pump in an additional $200 million subsidy to help cover the increase. The council says the price hike is primarily due to the global energy crunch, which caused energy prices to soar from 2020 to 2021. That, coupled with inflation and an increase in manpower costs. Adult fares will go up by 4 cents if the journey is 8.2 kilometres and below, and 5 cents if the distance is more than that. This means that an MRT ride from Boon Lay to Clementi, where the distance is 8.2 km, will be $1.45 for adult commuters, up from $1.41 currently. An MRT journey from Harbour Front to Paya Lebar, where the distance is 11.5 km, will cost $1.64, up from $1.59. Prices of monthly concession passes and adult monthly travel passes will remain unchanged. The government is also providing 600,000 public transport vouchers, valued at $30 each, to lower and lower middle income households. Well, reaction to the fare hikes has been mixed. Some commuters who spoke with CNA shrugged off the increases, saying they'll be manageable. Others worry that their transportation costs will add up in the longer term. For me, I uh, changed three months, uh, I mean three buses. So uh, when you take that into consideration, for one year, it could actually, if they didn't change that, it could save me a lot of money. So I feel like government shouldn't have done this. If it's 250 days, I take four buses a day, so uh, I would pay uh, about $10 extra. So that's still a lot, large amount, to be honest. I don't really see a difference for me, because maybe over time there'll be something stacking up, but like, it's just one cent in my point of view, so it seems like okay so far. Okay la, one cent, you know, as long as it's not uh, uh, like 10 cent or 20 cent, you know, so uh, it's okay for me la. The increase, I feel that I think we can, we can absorb it a bit and I guess we can uh, continue to uh, appreciate what uh, the benefits of having such a good uh, public transport here. On this, we are joined by Associate Professor Walter Thesera from the Singapore University of Social Sciences. Uh, Professor, this 2.9% increase, a fee hike close to inflation. Uh, we just heard uh, some reactions from the average commuter, uh, slightly mixed. But do you expect this to be easy for commuters over uh, looking beyond the immediate reaction? Are they likely to accept this over time? Well, nobody wants to pay higher prices for anything. Uh, but the reality is the cost of running public transport has actually shot up in the last two years. In fact, uh, the high inflation, the energy crisis, all of us have been living through this year is not even included in the fare review because it's too soon. Uh, but the operators have been paying the cost already. 
since the start of the year, since last year. So when the bill comes, the question is, who's going to pay for it? And the decision here is the commuter will have to pay for 2.9% with the total increase. Uh, and that means the government or the taxpayer is actually paying for the rest of the increase through additional subsidies. Dr. Thesera, the operators indeed, they've already been paying the costs uh, for, for what we've seen uh, with higher energy costs and so on. How challenging is it going to be for them, for SMRT trains, for SBS Transit as well, to maintain standards and reliability? That's something that commuters uh, really want the most, uh, apart from you know, good value for money. And, and these operators, they had asked for an even higher fare hike this year to the maximum allowable 13.5%. Yes, the operators uh, will have asked for the maximum fare hike because they've already been paying all of the bills for higher inflation wages, energy costs. Uh, the way our fare formula works is that it, it's actually lagging. It only implements the change in fares after the cost changes have already occurred. Uh, but of course, we don't want them to cut standards to make ends meet. Uh, that's why it is good that the government is stepping in to cover this gap between the fair formula cap and the actual fair increase with more subsidies. Um, I also have to note that this is largely an issue for the rail side. For the bus side, uh, the fare level doesn't affect their revenue because the government pays them directly to run services. It's the government who bears the losses for bus operations. So what will happen is uh, government subsidies for buses will go up even more because the fare revenue there will not catch up. All right, uh, Professor, we heard the transport minister early on in the, in the report saying that it's a never easy, fair adjustments are never easy things to do, but they need to be updated to keep public transport financially sustainable. Uh, what you've seen in terms of these adjustments, do they strike the right balance? I'd say uh, Public Transport Council was able to balance both sides today only because the government was able to step in to provide an additional subsidy to cover that 10.6% of the increase that is not going to our fares right now. Uh, without the government and taxpayers stepping in, I think there's no question commuters would have been asked to pay much more or we would have to look at uh, pretty large service cuts. And, and this is what is happening in other cities. Uh, to balance the budget elsewhere, commuters are asked to pay more or to accept service cuts. In the UK, I think London, they're talking about a 13 to 14% fare hike next year. So we are actually in a good position because uh, we have the fiscal headroom for the government and taxpayer to step in. Without that, it would be a very, very difficult decision. A principal reason why this is all happening is because those energy prices have hiked up so enormously, not just here in Singapore, all, all over the world. What if energy prices continue to rise even higher, Dr. Thesera? Well, for the commuter, uh, they would be insulated from the uh, increase because the fare formula only allows prices to change once a year. But of course, uh, transport operators will be starting to pay immediately if their energy prices go up. I, I think what will happen is if we see a sub increase and there's a um, sustainability problem, uh, government may have to step in to maintain the quality of service. So that means the taxpayer will be helping out, I suspect, if, if that were to happen. Oh, Professor, you mentioned earlier, we have the fiscal headroom now. But the Public Transport Council is already working on a new form for bus and train fare adjustments. This is to be applied in the next exercise. What can we expect then, looking ahead? Well, right now it's a bit early to say because they're still deliberating. But I think there are a few big issues. Big issue is how should we split the cost of operating public transport between the commuter and the taxpayer? The idea is the commuter pays for operating costs. Uh, pardon me, uh, Associate Professor Walter Tazera, we're losing the audio there, the quality. We cannot continue with this interview for now. There was a thanks very much indeed for Associate Professor Walter Tazera from the Singapore University of Social Sciences.